In this video, we will demonstrate how to conduct plant washes on your farm. Plant washes are the most effective method to detect low levels of highly damaging pests, such as Thrips parvus spinus, a new invasive pest. Other sampling methods, such as plant taps, visual plant inspections, and sticky card inspections are less effective. This is because plant washes effectively dislodge thrips and other insects from tiny nooks and crannies in the plant. Plant washing can also help you evaluate pest pressure before and after the use of different management strategies and help determine which life stages of a pest are present to help with pesticide selection. The supplies you'll need to conduct plant washes on your farm are inexpensive and can be found on Amazon or from a drugstore or dollar store. You'll need two or three jars or containers, like a deli food container or a mason jar with tight fitting lids. Soap and water, dish and hand soap works well, so there's no need to use insecticidal soap. You can also use rubbing alcohol. A sieve or colander to pour wash contents through. This one is a canning colander that fits directly on a mason jar. The size of the holes on the sieve are not important. A spray bottle to spray bubbles down and get any remaining insects out of the jar. Coffee filters or small filters to catch the insects. Try to match the size and shape of the filters to the type of sieve or colander that you have. Lastly, you'll need some sort of shallow container like a deli food container or something that is wide enough to hold the coffee filters so that you can look at them later. The first thing that you'll want to do is collect plant material that you want to wash. Generally, thrips and other pests prefer new growth, so that is where you're most likely to find adults and immature stages. You'll need to cut growing points or flowers off of the plants and place them in the washing jar. Make sure you collect a representative sample of plant material throughout the crop or the variety you are interested in. Do not pack the cuttings too tightly in the jar as you want to be able to effectively agitate them in the wash solution. Once you have your plant samples in the collection container, fill it with enough water to just cover the plant material. Then add a small amount of soap, just enough to break the surface tension in the water roughly about a quarter teaspoon to half a teaspoon per liter of water. Alternatively, you can use rubbing alcohol instead of soap and water. Whether you use the soap or alcohol method is up to you. Alcohol has the benefit of killing the insects immediately. Soap is cheaper, but you will need to put the filter paper in the freezer after straining to kill the insects before counting. If you are using the alcohol method, it is still a good idea to put the filter paper in the freezer afterwards to ensure all insects are killed. Once you have gotten your plant material and solution, tightly fit the lid on the jar and shake vigorously for about 45 seconds. Once you have sufficiently shaken your jar, place a coffee filter in the sieve and then place it over the second container to catch the liquid. Pour the plant material and solution mixture into the sieve. The thrips and other insects and some plant material will be caught in the filter paper. If the coffee filter and jar is very sudsy, use the spray bottle filled with tap water to break the bubbles. You may need to do this several times. The soap and water method can create lots of bubbles whereas the rubbing alcohol method doesn't, so you don't have to spray down the bubbles with the alcohol method. Take the big chunks of plant material out of the filter. 
if there is lots of small plant material on the filter, such as trichomes, small leaves, or pollen, this will make counting and identifying thrips and other pests very difficult. If this happens, you may need to wash more samples of a smaller amount of plant material or strain the water through the sieve without the filter first to eliminate large chunks of plant material and then go ahead with the filter. Next, carefully lift the filter from the sieve and place it as flat as possible in the food container or similar container. Make sure to label with the crop and variety that you sampled and the date. If the filter is really wet, you can add a piece of paper towel to the container first. Whether you use the water or alcohol method, you will want to place the container in the freezer for 24 hours to ensure all insects are killed. The container can be placed in the fridge or freezer to assess later, but don't wait longer than 72 hours or the thrips or other insects will start to dry out, making identification and counting more difficult. Have another mason jar or deli container on hand to reuse the solution for each sample so you're not wasting it. Before examining the sample, make a data sheet that has categories for the date, crop type, variety, number of plants sampled, number of pests found, and who looked at the sample. You can also add a column for pest species and life stage. When examining the sample under the microscope, it is easier to keep track of where you have counted by drawing a grid on the filter. Place the filter under the microscope and using a probe or small paintbrush, sift through the plant debris on the filter to look for thrips or other pests. Use a counter or tally app on your phone to record when you see an insect. If you are counting multiple species or life stages, have a different tally for each. To keep track of which section of the grid you have counted, put a dot next to that section once it is complete. Once you have all of your data, be sure to enter it into a spreadsheet or scouting software. This way you can compare insect pressure or the number of different species present for factors such as different varieties, the time, the year, or before and after management strategies. Here we show a real world example where plant taps would have greatly underestimated the thrips population after the first spray, while plant washes indicated that the second application was necessary. <laughs> Alright, maybe let's get one where I'm not jumping.